I'm Walt Diederich, and I want to greet you all to the Sterling North Society here in Edgerton, Wisconsin. I said Sterling North Society. Actually, this is the Sterling North House and Museum. So my purpose for being here today is to show you part of the museum and hopefully give you a good idea of what it's like here to be part of the Sterling North Society. So first step would be to go into the kitchen. We're here in the kitchen of the Sterling North House. I should say a few things about the house, I suppose. Number one is that the house was very run down when we first received it. Five of us men who worked for five years to get the house back into this kind of condition. Now it's one of the finest of reproductions or repairs at least that you can find in historical places. Here in the kitchen, we have many, many pieces of furniture which were of the type that were in existence when Sterling North lived in the house. There are only a few pieces which actually came from the North family, but there are many which are very similar to what would have been here when Sterling was here as a boy. Number one is the high chair, which is located right here in the kitchen. It's especially important to us because this is an important part of the story which tells of Sterling coming down and finding his raccoon ready to eat something and in front of him were two sugar cubes. The raccoon picked one up and started washing it in his bowl of milk. The cube dissolves. This happened to a rascal and the rascal was really confused so Sterling gave him another. Rest up. This time rascal just looked at it, put it in his mouth and ate it. Never again did he use a bowl of milk to wash a sugar cube. When I go through the house, I like to, like to look at things uh, which were of the period. Everything is at least as old as 1918, but I only talk about things which pertain specifically to the rascal story. And behind me is a paddle which was actually made by Sterling, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as I move over here. In this room, Sterling built a canoe which was 17 feet long. Well, you can imagine what it'd be like to be a boy of of 11 or 12 started to build a canoe today in the living room of his house. When I have kids here with me, I ask them to think about what it would have been like, what it would be like for them to tell your mother and their mother that they're going to build a canoe in the living room and expect to see some interesting responses. And I get some. Almost always it's a head shaking like that. So imagine a canoe here in this room, 18 feet long, 17 feet long. His father was very liberal and lived here with him, so he was able to do whatever he pleased in the house. Another important part of the story in this room is the fact that the, the tree, the Christmas tree here, was in, present when his sister came and she, she saw the canoe in this room and decided not to say very much, but was unhappy with it being here. There was a, some question about the screen in front of the Christmas tree also, the rascal had given Sterling a bad time when he tried to destroy some ornaments which were on the tree. So Sterling decided that he would build this chicken wire fence in order to protect the Christmas tree. So I say two things here. One is the Christmas tree, very, very important. And the other is the, is the canoe itself in this room and the attitudes that uh, maybe some of his family people took. One of the questions that is asked many times when, when uh, people are brought through the house is, what are those funny looking lines in the canoe? Well, it was necessary to put ribs inside of a canoe and it was being constructed by Sterling. And he found cheese boxes at a butcher shop downtown and he was able to locate ones which had already been cut. So he has ribs in the canoe which were made directly from cheese boxes. He was also able to saw the cheese box the remaining part of the cheese box into ribs of the same size. Really a great idea, but then Sterling was a clever person. Imagine what, what it would have been like to be a boy of 14 and suddenly have all of his plans taken from him when he got the illness of polio. He was unable to walk for a long time. He, the, the medical person said he would not live. After he, it, was, it was obvious that he would live, he then was told that he would never walk again, but he was a strong person. He and his father worked together trying to make some mechanisms which would help Sterling and uh, develop his muscles a little bit better. Oh. Here is where he spent some time. This is one of the few pieces of furniture that came from 
the North family. And this came from Aunt Lily's house out at Bussyville. So when I walk in here and see this, I can feel what it must have been like to lay here and know very well that all of my plans were lost. But uh, he did learn some other things from Aunt Lily. It was Aunt Lily who suggested to him that he then could continue enjoying life by being a good writer. So he went from that point on and became the writer that he was. The newspapers you just viewed showed things which were taking place in Europe during World War I. It's important to the story because Sterling's brother was in the army during World War I and fought in most of the major battles that the United States forces were in at that time. His picture is located right here and it looks an awful lot like Sterling himself. We have a picture of Sterling heading toward Indian Ford with Rascal in the basket of his bicycle. His bicycle was very similar to the one that you see here. And I said earlier that most of the furnishings in the house are at least as old as 1918. This is one which is just a little bit newer than that. But it shows the kind of a bicycle that Sterling would have ridden from Edgerton to Indian Ford, from Edgerton to Bessieville where his, his uh, aunt and uncle lived and grandparents, and his father lived there also. This was Sterling's bedroom when he and his father lived here alone. But whenever one of his sisters would visit, that sister would live in this room. A story that I like to tell, and most people like real well about this room, is the one time when Sterling's sister was, was visiting, she had a new diamond ring. She had just been engaged, and she was looking for it and said that she couldn't find her diamond ring. Sterling and his father looked all over for it, couldn't find it, and Chief came to them and said, oh, I'm sorry, I found it. It was in my purse. Sometime later, she again lost her diamond, but this time she was quite sure that she hadn't left it in her purse. In fact, she thought it was on the sink in the bathroom, which was just on the other side of this wall. So Sterling and his father looked around and couldn't find it, and Sterling had an idea. He had seen his pet raccoon and his pet crow arguing over items on the back porch. The raccoon likes sparkly things, and the pet crow likes sparkly things. And Sterling had this idea that, well, you know, maybe the raccoon stole the ring, took it to the back porch, and it was taken from him by Poe the crow. And then with it, Poe flew to the, to the top of the Methodist Church where he had a nest. But then Sterling thought, thought you know, that's pretty far-fetched. But if nothing else was found. Nowhere else could they, look, they see a thing which, in, which even looked close to a diamond ring. So he climbed up inside the steeple of the Methodist Church and found, remarkably, a big sheet of copper, bright, shiny copper. He found a group of marbles and other pieces of glass, bright, shiny pieces of glass. He found some shiny coins, he found his football whistle, and he found a diamond ring. Now, I think about Sterling coming down, carefully down the ladder inside the, of the steeple and bringing this, to, this diamond ring to his sister, saying, oh, sister, look what I found. And I'm wondering each time I tell the story, what kind of a woman was his sister? Was she a kind and understanding woman, or was she a sort of a one who didn't understand too well the fact that there were these little creatures running around the house. I like to believe she was a nice lady, and I tell that to people that come through here. A couple of things in this room. Number one is that this is one of the few pieces of furniture which actually came from the North family. This was in Aunt Lily's house out at Bussyville. And I'm sure that Sterling, as a young boy, would spend some time looking at himself in this mirror whenever he would get a chance to go into his aunt's bedroom. Sterling was uh, brought up with a Christian, uh, sort of a Christian background at the Methodist Church, which is just a, a few houses away from here. And this is the Bible that he received after he was confirmed. And inside the Bible, it says, this is to Sterling North for regular attendance at Sunday school, October 1917 to June 1918 from William Hooten who incidentally was also mentioned in the Book of Rascal, who is pastor of the Methodist Church here in Edgerton, Wisconsin. 
I can fool that old lady living downstairs in what was my bedroom. I can fool her easily by locking the door. Because this was the place where I would allow rascals to come up the window, up to the window. I nailed some slats on the wall outside, and he was able to climb and come in the window. And she never knew that he was living in the house with me. Uh, I, as a boy of 10, moved across the road from Sterling's father, D.W. North, David Willard North. And he and I were friendly to each other. We talked about a lot of historical things. And one day he came to my house with this box and said, uh, Sterling had this as a boy, but I'm sure that he'll never use it again. So if you'd like to have this, then certainly take it. Well, I, I took it without thinking that it would ever be in a museum, which has to do with Sterling North himself. In this room, and in the adjoining room, lots of things took place which had to do with directly with Sterling North. And now, when I take people through here, there's a level of excitement that comes out of me when I enter these rooms where Sterling had spent the, the time that he lived here with mm, so many of the adventures that he had. Looking around here, you can see lots of different things which have to do with Sterling, primarily, though, books. In the cases over here are his first books. His first book was the Pedro Garino. His first novel, which is in the upper shelf, was the Plowing on Sunday. And this book was unique because it told things about the Edgerton people, but he called it fiction. But Edgerton people recognized themselves and had some differences of opinion with Sterling North. In fact, that book was so badly looked at by Edgerton people that it was put on the lower shelf of the library and was actually banned from the library shelves. Okay, the desk that we have here actually came from Sterling's house in, in New Jersey. A walnut tree crashed after a storm and they had the wood cut up and he was able then to make this desk. But more important to me is the typewriter that's here. This is an indication of the kind of a person that Sterling was. He had, had uh, some some uh, strokes when he was doing a lot of his work, but uh, way back at the beginning, instead of learning how to type with all of his fingers, with a keyboard skills, he typed only with two fingers. But when he had a stroke, part of his body was paralyzed and he could only type with one finger. But his last book, The Wolfling, was written on this typewriter by Sterling with only one finger. It's generally not known, but the story of Rascal is very important in the country of Japan. All of the things that you see on the shelf over here were purchased in Japan and brought to us by some of the visitors that we've had, many of whom uh, came from Japan and, and are, no, are still citizens in Japan. Some men came to Edgerton in 1970, the middle 1970s and photographed many things about Edgerton because they wanted to know some more about Rascal. So then they went back to Japan and prepared a 52-episode animated cartoon series which was shown on television one night a week for a year, and then it was shown again and again. So I've taken you through the North House. I've talked about Sterling. I've talked about some members of his family. But I hope I didn't tell you everything, and I hope there's still an item of a little feeling of mystery that makes you want to come here. I'm very, very happy to have you come. So when in doubt, you can just phone the society and we'll make some arrangements for you to be there.